You're in a relationship. The relationship is betrayed. Before you're betrayed, you're in one place. And after you're betrayed, you're in another place. Before you're betrayed, your world is all structured. And you know where you are and what you're doing and who you're with and what everything is. The second after you're betrayed, none of that's true. The second after you're betrayed, nothing is structured. It's like everything reverts to, to a chaotic place. You know him, you know who he is, you've been with him for a while, and suddenly he starts being erratic in his behavior in ways that are not really understandable. Uh, you might ask him what's going on and he's unable to explain it to you. He doesn't have the time of day to explain it to you, but you notice that things are changing. He's changing his appearance in some way. He's changing habits in a way that doesn't really add up. But I mean, there's changes that are positive. A guy decides to start exercising more, that doesn't mean he's cheating. It could be, but it could mean that he's getting healthier. But when there's no rhyme or reason for the changes in scheduling, in behavior, in time alone, and he's unwilling or unable to express what's, uh, what's happening, that might be one sign that cheating is in the beginning stages and it's starting to take place. Every time someone gets flipped upside down because of a betrayal in a relationship, after the betrayal happens, they say to themselves, there were all these signs I didn't pay attention to. So, and maybe the first sign is, who knows, your partner starts to flirt a bit more when you go out on a social occasion. It's, and not a lot more, just a bit more. And you decide, because maybe you're timid, that, that that's okay. You're not going to just do anything about it. But it's, it's interesting that it happens it grabs your attention and it means something but what you decide is it's not worth paying attention to and so maybe the next eight times that you go out the same thing happens but it happens at a somewhat accelerated rate and then maybe the person starts to go out without you and so on there's this progression towards the end state of betrayal and every time you get a little hint the world tells you that something's going on you put it aside and you fail to take it into account. A change in his affection, a change in the way he looks at you, a change in his sex drive. So when you know the way he is and you know him to be someone that's charged electrically, he's someone who gets excited, he's someone who gets horny for lack of a better term, and all of a sudden he's losing that. I mean, again, there's many things that could provoke that in him. Uh, lower testosterone, emotional challenges that have nothing to do with you, problems at work, but when that takes place and other things are not adding up, when you notice that you used to have sex in a certain frequency and now it's not taking place and when you bring it up, he's not really able to express what's going on, but you know that you still, when you see him, emotionally, internally, your intuition tells you this guy still has a sex drive, he's just not sharing it with me, that's something that needs to be addressed. If the sex is lacking, if the frequency is waning, then it's far more likely for him to feel validated by somebody else, to feel excited about somebody else that's not you, and to eventually take action in a way that would disrupt or even destroy the relationship. You're foregoing your opportunity to adjust the relationship at micro stages, because maybe what you should have done the first time that happened is you should have gone home with your partner and said, um, what the hell's going on? Like, this is what was happening. Why are you doing that? Um, here's how you should have behaved. And of course, that's gonna be a fight. There's absolutely no doubt about it. But it might be a micro fight instead of a, the relationship is over fight. He gets weirdly jealous and accusatory in, in ways that he hasn't before. Maybe he's someone who's been relaxed or sort of jealous, but not in a weird way. And now he's getting really extreme about it. Maybe he's pointing fingers at you. Maybe he's, and it comes out of nowhere. You've had friends for a while or you're doing certain things. Your, your habits aren't changing, but the intensity with which he's accusing you of things changing is taking place. That's typically a sign of someone who's doing something weird, somebody who's doing something that's outside of bounds, and he thinks that you might be doing the same. So this is sometimes a sign of, again, other challenges that might be taking place in him, but when it comes out of nowhere, and when he's very intense about it, this could be a strong sign that he is doing something absolutely uncool and uh, unfaithful, and he's trying to 
reflect that on you. He's projecting his own fears about himself into you. In order to keep our relationship healthy, it needs to be retooled at micro levels constantly. And the same is the case with your own character. When you encounter something that's unexpected, especially if it's small enough to handle, you need to extract the information from it, rebuild the world and rebuild yourself. And then maybe if you continue doing that, every time you get evidence of an anomaly or an error, or every time the world manifests some meaning to you, then you won't have to fall apart because the structure that constitutes you is going to remain viable and healthy from the bottom up. And if you don't do that, then those errors are going to accumulate. And when they finally do manifest themselves as unavoidable, like when your partner says, I don't want to be with you anymore, or I've been with someone else for the last year, there's no ignoring that. Then the whole thing comes crashing down. You're no longer in a relationship. You're no longer in a good relationship. And then all the other things become questionable. He over explains his answers. So what does that mean? You ask him a question and then he talks a little bit too much about what he's doing. Like, so what did you do today? And then he starts describing things in a way that's too much. Or maybe he, you don't even ask him for an explanation and he starts sharing in a way that doesn't, that feels off. Why is he giving you so much detail about something that maybe he's never giving you details about? Why is he being overly explanatory in his answers? That's part of it. The other part that relates to communication is when he's not oversharing, but you ask him about something he did, you ask him where he was, you ask him who's messaging him, you ask him any sort of thing that is not necessarily something cool that's happening in the relationship, you feel like something's off. And when you ask him about it, his reaction is over the top. Instead of just calmly, if you have nothing to hide, you can calmly say, hey, this is what's going on. But when you have something to hide, you can overreact to make sure that the person who is accusing you of something tempers down. It's kind of like gaslighting. You're going to share something to the other person that makes them think that uh, the problem's on them. They're crazy, they're irrational, uh, and you have, you're indignant about it. Like, how dare you question my whereabouts? Uh, instead of saying, hey, I was here and here. I mean, relax, calm, because you have nothing to hide. When he's over the top with his reactivity, when pressed on something that he's doing that feels shady, that's a clear sign that something weird is taking place. It may not be cheating, but it probably is. When he is weird about his phone, when he's secretive about his phone, when he's uncomfortable when you get next to his phone, when he's hiding from your view as he's typing something, when he, there's, his phone is ringing and you can hear the text come in and out, but he's not even turning around to see who it is. And if you ask him about it, he gets flustered, he gets anxious, he gets tight. That's a sign that something shady is taking place.